So uh, we're thrilled to be here. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, I think we've assembled a really great panel. We're really excited to hear from these guys and to uh, have some wisdom shed on what we think is the defining question right now that so many of us struggle with. How do we create mobile apps? Do we do web? Do we do native? Do we do some kind of a hybrid of the, of the two approaches? So hopefully tonight we'll, we'll get some interesting answers. And uh, let's dive right in. Um, well, first, we should probably introduce ourselves a little bit, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm Ben Galbraith. I'm Vice President of Mobile Engineering at Walmart Labs. I'm Dion Almer. I'm Vice President of Mobile Architecture at Walmart Labs. We still totally have different jobs. differences. Totally different jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Very different. And uh, we're going to try something a little different with the questions. Um, if you can tweet your questions at uh, to at Tech Exploration, we're going to be watching on Twitter and uh, following along and picking out questions. If the system breaks down or if you're just feeling really passionate about shouting your question out, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll repeat the question for the audience. So we're just kind of experimenting with it to see how it works. We've got a bunch of pre-prepared questions we're going to run through for about 40 minutes. And then we're going to turn it over to you guys uh, after that. So start thinking about what you want to ask. And uh, with that, let's introduce the panelists. Uh, let's start with this guy right here. This is Abe Elias, CEO of, uh, <laughs> this is uh, Jeff Haney, who's the CEO of Appcelerator. Uh, we've known Jeff and his co-founder, Nolan, for ever since you guys started out in that small office on Castro, right? Are you, you're still on Castro, though, right? You moved off? You're a couple blocks away. Oh, Millfield. OK, so, uh, so uh, Jeff is the kind of CEO that, uh, that I love, the engineering kind, who started out hacking away and uh, sort of grew up into a group of consultants and then a, a business and now a really big, well-funded business. And uh, you still get your hand in the code from time to time, right? You certainly yeah, review they, patches. They, they, yeah, they don't like it, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so of course, the, the flagship product of his company, of Accelerator, is Titanium, which is a cross-platform GUI toolkit that's on top of the native platform, so on top of Android, on top of uh, iOS, and gives you an API you can use to create apps that actually use native widgets. And you also have a layer on top of HTML5 too, right? Yep. Uh, so uh, Jeff's got some great perspectives, We're really well connected, really excited to have him on the panel. Then we've got Abe Elias. Uh, we met Abe uh, a long time ago. I don't know if anyone remembers YUIEXT, that then became EXTJS, that's now Censure. Abe's the co-founder of Censure and the current CTO. And so he's been involved in the whole kind of Ajax space uh, since the beginning. I remember writing blog posts on, uh, we had a little blog called ajaxian.com about all of the really, really cool stuff that they were doing to build kind of real world uh, Ajax apps. And then naturally when the mobile revolution came along, they uh, jumped on that too and they were able to kind of take the best of their framework and build Censure Touch to give you a, a really fantastic HTML5 uh, based framework that can try to abstract away the different pain of uh, getting things running across uh, the different web runtimes. And so uh, Abe joined us in Silicon Valley two or three years ago from beautiful sunny Florida. I'm sure he still likes it here, but uh, really glad to have you on. Thank you. Next is Kevin Hurst, who uh, just met tonight. Uh, Kevin is the Vice President of uh, Mobile Products for uh, Mobile Product Management. Yeah. Right? Did I get that right? For eBay. Uh, and uh, he has some of the coolest products around in his portfolio. Notably, I just wanted to highlight one of the newer ones, the eBay uh, iPad app that shipped recently. I don't know if you all had a chance to play with it, but uh, it's really kind of dramatic, Kevin, if I can say. Because like the eBay apps I'd played with before were they're OK. Uh, but the eBay iPad app, I think, is really best to breed for retail and really uh, rose the bar. Uh, I know the team's obviously doing a spectacular job, and it shows in the numbers. Um, so they're, they're running $10 billion worth of transactions through mobile now. That's, Billions? That's like this past year, cumulative, cumulative total, is that? And, uh, and they so drinks are on him, right? Is that oh, what that's right. I'm right. sure the bonus <laughs> pool of material. And, uh, and they added uh, 1.8 million new customers to the business. This is really kind of an exciting stat because a lot of us view mobile as maybe a little bit cannibalistic. But to, to add net new uh, people with a brand as sort of unknown as eBay, right? A brand that's as saturated as eBay is really saying something about the role that mobile is playing right now. So, uh, so when you look at Kevin, think about the guy running the most interesting stuff happening in eBay from the consumer experience perspective and sort of trying to answer the question that we're all trying to answer too. So excited to have his perspectives. Next we got Andre Charlon from Canada who uh, wishes he was skiing right now, uh, <laughs> but instead he's kindly joined us. Uh, Andre had a, a company called Nitobi, and uh, they also, back in the, the old days, the pre, even before jQuery, had this uh, top-notch Ajax framework that, that they'd built out. 
Um, and then as they were kind of building this, there was iPhone dev camp and, and all these kind of things kind of coming out. Remember when the first iPhone came out, the only way you could do anything with it was web stuff, right? And so uh, members of uh, his team with Andre built uh, PhoneGap, uh, which we uh, you know, now know as PhoneGap and uh, kind of grew that side of the business. And then uh, Adobe uh, smartly purchased uh, Andre and his team uh, to kind of come into his director of product manager uh, for the PhoneGap product right now, uh, was president of Adobe. And uh, he was always really interesting to work with. We, we have uh, had his company, when it was a consulting company, work on several uh, projects for us. And they were really great guys that you know, could, could build great things for us, but also managed to build their own really successful products. And uh, finally, have any of you seen that demo that's a couple of years old now of uh, a web browser showing sort of native looking iPhone components and like uh, going through all these different stages called JQ Touch? And it was just sort of this really sexy demo. Did anyone see that before in the audience? So this, this last guy, David Canada, am I pronouncing the last name right, by the way? Canada. 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 Uh, Canada. Uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> um, he did that. That's his framework, JQ Touch. Um, and uh, so it really sort of is how he first came on the scene. And then he went over to Abe's company, Sentia. By the way, Abe, why did you guys part ways? Did you? No. <laughs> but, uh, he was at uh, Abe's company for a while and, uh, at Sentia and really was sort of defining the look of Sentia Touch and that framework and did a lot of great work there. And, uh, and is now designer in residence at Benchmark Capital. And at some point, if we have time, we'd love to understand what that actually means. Designer uh, in the house. Yeah, yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that clarification. <laughs> Uh, so, designer in residence at Benchmark Capital, where he uh, works with all their portfolio companies and is a general resource and, and uh, sort of a sweetheart gig, I think. So, uh, that's the panel, and uh, let's dive in with some questions. Cool. So, we've got a few different themes. Uh, we're going to kick off with talking about you know, the, the story that's come up around Facebook, right? Facebook was very bullish on uh, using a hybrid approach. Uh, talked about this a lot, SDK in there to use HTML applications within uh, the Facebook app. It's had an interesting career where Joe Hewitt built this you know, native uh, Facebook app at first that people loved and then kind of built a CSS framework in Objective-C and uh, became this really complex thing. Um, and then that got ripped up and they, they went with HTML5 and then uh, recently they uh, came along and built a native version of that. Um, maybe not 100% native, um, and uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg got up on stage and said, the biggest mistake we've ever made was, was doing this HTML5 thing too early. And a lot of people missed some of the other nuances, like went on to talk about how massive the mobile website of the business is and this, that, and the other. But you know, kind of, uh, you know, especially for tech writers, they love grabbing their little, um, little bit of uh, information and making that the story. So I just wanted to ask you guys kind of, what does the Facebook experience kind of tell us about the state of uh, mobile apps and native versus web and, and things of that nature? So maybe we start. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> from my perspective, I mean, I. Maybe this is not uh, very fun for technical, but I, th I think it's a, it, what it tells us is the remember the user and it's about the experience and what's the right technology experience for the user and what's the, what's the, tech te what's the right technology to match that at the time. Um, you know, again, whether it's, whether it's HTML5 or native, uh, you know, clearly from their standpoint, what their implementation of HTML5 or hybrid, however, they, however you want to call it, um, they clearly screwed up and they were forgetting really ultimately the end user experience. And, um, they probably, definitely the technology exists to be able to do something different, um, but they didn't and they were really, I think, grappled philosophically with uh, one approach versus just really what's the great experience for the user and I think that's what, you know, at least I take from it. I, I think one thing that's important to realize is that their <coughs> mobile website traffic and usage is still a lot higher, like many, many times more than their native app usage, so to say that they've gone away from HTML and JavaScript is would not be the right conclusion to draw from that. How they built their native mobile apps is, is a different story. Yeah. Um, of course, there's been a lot of tech, really smart technologists and programmers who have dissected how their old iOS app was built in this kind of hybrid model, and it turns out they were doing a lot of things that were not accepted as the kind of latest and greatest of how we build JavaScript applications, so there's a lot of fault that they have to um, except themselves as an engineering organization before they just blame the technology and, and throw it under the bus. So I think when you look at those two things, you know, there's definitely, that, was, that headline was blown out of proportion. I think HTML5 is still very important and it's clearly very important for Facebook still. Um, that being said, you know, coming from PhoneGap, we believe that there is a time and a place for pure HTML and JavaScript applications. 
in native wrapper, and there's a time when you have to augment that with um, also native components. Uh, and it's just, you know, finding the right balance of that um, is really what I think they should be looking at. Yeah, my, my opinion was is that Facebook wasn't ready for HTML5, that HTML5 is ready, but the resources that they had um, didn't implement the Facebook app using best practices. So what are some of the things that they did wrong? Both you and Andre have alluded. Yeah. So the first thing was is that it was heavily XML based. So yeah. any request that went out was upwards of 200K. Hmm. Um, so what, what ends up happening is the, the, the user experience gets delayed as a result. Uh, they didn't actually implement any type of um, infinite scroll. So you get to the bottom and then you'd have to wait. Uh, so the, the, the actual experience itself was not very intuitive. So going back to what Jeff said, um, they didn't create a great user experience with HTML5. It's not that they couldn't, right. they just didn't. I, I think Jeff has it right. I mean, uh, I guess you might say that eBay actually, the lesson learned is that eBay made the right decision three and a half years ago because we went heavy into native. And uh, right now that's the vast majority of where our interactions and revenue is coming from. But the real issue is I think what Jeff said, it, you need to focus on the user experience and and not get caught up in the religion over, you know, are we using this development platform or that one?